Hi, my name is Mike Large and I'm a local lawyer in Boulevard Gardener. I was also the lead volunteer contributor to the City of Victoria's Boulevard Gardening Guidelines. I'm here today to talk to you about Boulevard Gardening in the City of Gardens. I'm sitting on a street side boulevard, part of the unceded and occupied Coast Salish territories of Lukwangan peoples. And when I say boulevard, you might think of the grassy strips between the property line and the street. That's right, that's where boulevards are located. They do tend to be covered in grass, but they hold the potential to be so much more. Start a boulevard garden, something like this. Or this. Boulevard gardens can increase ecological diversity, restore native plants to more areas, and provide bird, butterfly, and pollinator habitats. Depending on the quality of the site and the soil, edible plants can improve the availability of fresh, local, and sustainable food sources. These gardens can offer community building, placemaking, traffic calming, and healthier living. Now before we get growing, please understand that I'm talking only about boulevards located within the boundaries of the city of Victoria. I'm not talking about Oak Bay, I'm not talking about Esquimalt or any of the Saniches. The reason I focus on Victoria exclusively is that Victoria is the only city that has in place the generous set of boulevard gardening guidelines that I'm talking about. Now, before you get to work outside, you've got some inside work to do. Now go to your Google, type in Boulevard Gardening Victoria or some such, that should bring you to a City of Victoria Boulevard Gardening webpage. Lots of information here about Boulevard Gardening, including the Boulevard Gardening Guidelines. Give these a careful read. You'll find a lot of information here about things like utilities, maintenance, setbacks, sight lines, safety and liability, and much, much more. It's about eight pages long, maybe 30 to 60 minutes of reading. It's time well spent. Currently, there's no city permit required for Boulevard Gardening, but please understand that with control comes responsibility. By assuming control of the boulevard adjacent to your property for gardening purposes, you and your helpers assume full responsibility for your garden-related activities and also for ensuring that the Boulevard Gardening guidelines are followed. To me, the next inside step is quiet reflection, taking a deep look inside myself, asking myself, self? Am I willing and able to follow those boulevard gardening guidelines? Can I stick with the maintenance? Can I get water down to the street? And maybe most importantly, can I still enjoy the garden even if the things I plant walk away? This is indigenous land. It's public land. It's contested space. So you can expect that passersby will stop and pick. Children will pick. Deer will pick. Dogs will do worse than pick. So if you're good at sharing with others, boulevard gardening may be a good fit for you. Otherwise, it might be best to stay on your own private land where you can protect your plants as your own. Sure, I'm a lawyer, but if your veggies go missing, please do not contact me. I will not come to your aid. I will not take on the case of the missing cabbage. Please do not call the police. They will not come. Please do not call the city. They will not come, or at least they should not come. Why not? Well, no offense, but like me, I think a lot of those folks have more serious work to do. A quick cautionary note, workers may need to tear up your boulevard garden to do construction work or to get at the utilities buried underneath and you'd have no cause for complaint. I mentioned utilities. Utilities are often buried under the boulevard, things like gas lines, hydro lines, telecommunications lines. So the next bit of crucial indoor business is to contact BC One Call. Visit the BC One Call website for more information. Go to your Google, type in BC One Call or some such. That should take you straight to the BC One Call website. If you look around, you can find a phone number, you can give them a call. But for many people, it's easier just to use the online step-by-step -step process. Uh, in my example here, I'll click on homeowners and I'll see a series of steps to follow to submit a request for information on utilities. It starts with registering and submitting what they call a ticket. And that brings you to this fill in the blank form. So submit a form like this or make the call. It's mandatory. It doesn't cost anything and it's so easy. So the scariest thing I've seen on the boulevard in terms of underground utilities 
was a gas service line about 30 centimeters down. That's about one shovel blade. Now I didn't get to see that gas service line up close and personal, I got to see it on a drawing provided by BC One Call. Believe you me, if you hit a gas service line, someone will come. Lots of someones will come. Before getting your garden going, check out where your sewer, stormwater, and drinking water services are located. Those lines often run under the boulevard. You can do this yourself by checking a city website called VicMap. Type in VicMap, and that should take you straight to a City of Victoria website called VicMap. And launch that puppy. Soon enough, you should land on a map of the City of Victoria. Click on I want to, find an address, and then type in your address. Now comes the tricky part. You'll want to X out of this workflow box and a different box called layers should show up. If you drag down until you see the word planimetry, whatever that means, check that box and suddenly the boulevard and the sidewalk should appear on your map. Now this is how you can see where your boulevards are located. If you now drag up to engineering and public works, hit this plus button, you can um, open up a menu for sanitary sewer, storm drain, and water. And that'll show you all of those utilities. A bit of housekeeping. Please contact the City Parks Department with your full name, address, and telephone number, ideally at least 10 days before starting any gardening activities. Naturally, the city would like to keep better track of Boulevard Garden locations, in part to measure the success of the program. Finally, our inside work is done. Back out to the Boulevard. Starting a boulevard garden. No, you're not. That was no way to start a boulevard garden. Under the boulevard gardening guidelines, only the immediately adjacent property owner has permission to boulevard garden. Now on the upside, that person or persons can give permission to other folks, their helpers, relatives, friends, neighbors, anyone, to serve as helpers, to take care of the garden, to get the garden started. Um, so if you're the immediately adjacent homeowner, just Follow the steps in this video and you can get going. If you're a stranger to the boulevard, see if you can make friends with an immediately adjacent property owner and uh, use the letter I'll show you later to work out some kind of mutual understanding about the boulevard. Sorry, we're back inside for just a minute. Go to your Google, type in street greens or some such. That should take you to a boulevard gardening website I created. Now what I'd like to show you is a sample letter that you can use if you're an eager gardener trying to make some kind of arrangement with an adjacent property owner, an adjacent homeowner about a boulevard garden. It's under the How We Do It tab and is way down underneath all this useful information, but behind, hiding behind that useless ad, uh, here it is, Letter of Understanding. Ah. The Compost Education website and the Growing Together website both include a lot of helpful gardening information including how to plan your garden and how to turn your lawn into garden with little or no digging. I'm not going to talk about those topics much today, but I would urge you to check out those two websites. Hi, I'm a boulevard gardener. This is my house and I want to start a boulevard garden. I want to do this on my own, but I need a little help to get started. Okay, have you done all the inside work described in this video, including reading the City of Victoria's Boulevard Gardening Guidelines and dealing with BC One Call? Yes, I have. What did you have in mind? Just something small. That's fine. You don't have to upgrade the entire grass to garden. But if city workers have been cutting the grass around here, they might pass you by once they see a garden here, no matter how small it is. What about the neighbors? How do you think they might react to a boulevard garden? I think they'll be fine with it, but I haven't actually talked to them. Well, if you're not sure, it might be a good idea to ask around or maybe start the garden super small, just a few plants, ease the neighbors into it, especially if you're the first boulevard garden on the block. 
What about plants? What kind of plants would you like to get into the ground? Well, I'd really like to have some herbs. And I was thinking about the bees and maybe some lavender to bring them. Great. If you're growing herbs or other food for humans, and if you're worried about contamination, then I'd suggest getting a soil test done. There's a lab called MB Labs up near Sydney that does them. And there are other tips for coping with contamination in the city's Boulevard Gardening Guidelines. And I gotta keep referring you back to those Boulevard Gardening Guidelines. They're instructive, but they're also meant to be helpful. As just one example, plants can be quite tall, as tall as the tallest sunflowers. But be mindful of drivers, of cyclists and pedestrians. Wherever sight lines or safety may be an issue, Keep plants under one meter tall. Trim plants so they don't hang into the street or sidewalk. Keep plants at least 1.5 meters away from permanent structures like hydro poles and fire hydrants so workers can gain easy access. There are a lot of things in the Boulevard Gardening Guidelines that you might call common sense. For example, use hand tools only. Don't create tripping hazards around your garden. Don't leave open holes unattended. Very good, very good. And if your garden is long, provide a path every so often, at least once every eight meters. In the guidelines, you'll also find information on raised beds and ornaments and related distancing, how to work around boulevard trees, and all sorts of other topics. Consult those boulevard gardening guidelines for more information. So let's get going. What do we do next? Well, the easiest way to get this done is to get some unwaxed cardboard, pull out any staples and tape. We lay that down. If we have finished soil or compost like this, just dump it on there. And guess what? That cardboard is going to rot over the winter season. We're going to have some uh, fresh soil down in place, some fresh, clean soil. And you know, the grass will be smothered and uh, we can plant right now. Wow, that was easy. But what happens if we don't have any good soil ready? Ah, good question. You can create your own soil right down on the boulevard. Some people call it sheet mulching or composting in place or lasagna gardening. And there's lots of information online about it. For instance, if you go to my Street Greens website, you can find step-by-step -step instructions under a tab entitled Fair Field. So what would happen if I lose interest or I get sick or I sell the house and the garden starts to look neglected? Well, the city of Victoria will pass any complaints along to you. And if you get three in the same year and you don't fix whatever it is up, the city may come along, degrade your garden back down to grass and then pass along the cost of that to you as the adjacent property owner. Well, believe me, I have no intention of having that happen, but I guess, you know, I have to think about what if. I suppose I could plant clover or kinnikinick, and that would be ground cover, and I wouldn't have to cut the grass. I think that's a great idea. Bubble bump. Another tip, if you're moving away from the garden, moving away from boulevard gardening, Keep in mind that the Compost Education Center keeps a list of eager gardeners who are looking for space. Basically, it's a matching program. So if you're a homeowner looking for help in the garden or you're a gardener looking for space, you can write to the Compost Education Center. Remember, there are so many good reasons to start a boulevard garden. Re-establish native plants. Help feed the bees and other pollinators. Help feed yourself and your neighbors. Beautify the streetscape with color and diversity. Help build a sense of community. Stop burning fossil fuels for next to nothing. The list goes on. So have some fun, experiment on your boulevard. It can be so much more than grass. Excellent. This video is no substitute for a careful review of the city's boulevard gardening guidelines. The makers of this video disclaim any and all liability associated with gardening of any kind. No sunflowers were uprooted, trimmed, or otherwise harmed in the making of this film.